Do you wait for everything to be perfect and lined up straight before you make a choice? How hard are you trying to get everything in your life right? What if jumping in and getting messy is one of the ways to find out what works for you? Discover how being willing to mess up can create the phenomenal life you truly desire. Get ready to quit judging and start embracing all of your messy adventures. Now, here's your host, self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. Hello and welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. I am Katrina Fava, your host. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome, welcome to the show. Um, have you been here before? Um, if you haven't been here before, if you haven't listened to Messy Adventures in Living, here's a little bit about what we do and how we play on the show. Messy Adventures in Living is really all about um, letting go of being perfect and letting go of waiting for everything to be exactly right before you make a choice and before you begin living. What would it be like if you could just jump in um, even when things are not perfect, just choose something, um, even if it feels uncomfortable, how much more fun could it be to live that way rather than waiting for everything to be perfect? And, you know, perfect is a judgment. It's just a big set of judgments anyways. And what what is perfect? Who cares? Make choices. Jump in messy with your life. That's what we invite you to here on Messy Adventures in Living. Um, so you, I, I'm Katrina, and uh, I here's how I play in the world. Here's how I, all the different thing, areas that I like to play in. Um, I'm a mom of three kids. Their ages are 12, well, <laughs> 12 going on 25, I think, 12, 9, and um, 6. They're great. They give me lots of um, opportunities to look at what I'm choosing and ask questions about how things can be greater for all of us. They're awesome. Um, I also am a registered nurse, a pediatric nurse in Toronto, Ontario. I work at a hospital called uh, Sick Kids in Toronto. I have been working there for 19 years with um, and have had the amazing opportunity to get to know families and children who are going through some very intense things in their lives and it's been such a blessing and such a such an amazing contribution to my life to look at um to observe how people navigate through these things and really um has provided me with opportunities to question um some of the beliefs that we hold about bodies and illness and um, families and everything, really, and children especially. Um, so I've worked with children for 19 years. They're amazing. I absolutely love them. They're um, enormous bundles of oh, just their gifts, their contributions, if we're willing to receive the gifts that they be, they can really um, change our lives if we pay close attention to them. They're awesome. Uh, I'm also an author of three great books. Uh, I have contributed chapters in um, a book called Creations, Conscious Conception, Fertility, Pregnancy, and Birth, all about using the tools from a modality called Access Consciousness, and not actually, some of the chapters are not, um, to create something different around fertility and pregnancy and birth. And really, this book really is a collection of stories from, um, like, I think it's 16 or 18 different authors about um, a different approach and a different way of looking at pregnancy, birth, and fertility, and dropping all of the conclusions that we have and opening up ourselves to um, questioning what else is possible in this area and how that has can create magic. Um, I wrote in this chapter about my experience with a miscarriage uh, right around the time that I learned about the tools of access and how I learned to use questions and how I learned to um, really communicate with my body and be grateful um, have gratitude to my body and begin creating with my body rather than being angry at my body, which is really um, what I felt in the beginning when, when I first um, experienced this miscarriage. Anyways, it's a really great book. Um, you can find it on Amazon.com. Um, even if you are not considering uh, becoming a parent or if you know anyone who's become a parent, even if none of that is even in your world, if you pick it up and you read it, it's got some amazing tools in it that could definitely contribute to your life. Um, also, I've written in Possibilities in Parenting, which is a great book with a ton of tools for different 
a different set of tools for parenting, for sure, definitely different, uh, in which I wrote a chapter about bullying called Toolbox for Bullying Kids, very different point of view and very different perspective about bullying. And the other uh, book that I've written in is called The Power of Releasing Judgment, which is all about all the judgments that we do in this world um, and how releasing them can create something greater. So you can find all of those on Amazon.com, or you can check me out at PetrinaFava.com. They're there, too. Um, what else do I do and how else do I play? I have my own line of natural uh, skin care products called Naturally Happy Body. I love to create them here in my home, in my own kitchen. Uh, it's so much fun to play with um, play with my hands and uh, get messy <laughs> in my kitchen and um, create stuff that feels yummy for my body and I hope for other people's bodies too. So if you're interested in anything like that, you can check out naturallyhappybody.com. Okay, so um, let's get go into our topic. Oh, I'm actually, let me just, <laughs> I'm having one of those squirrel days where I'm like, uh, everything I can hear, I can hear everything very loudly. You know what I mean? Not hear with my ears, but energetically, I feel like I'm hearing everything very loudly this morning. <laughs> so on Messy Adventures in Living, we talk about tools from a modality called access consciousness. Um, it's a modality that empowers you to know uh, what you know, tap into your awareness, and ask questions to create possibility in your life to open up possibilities rather than function from conclusion, which is so much what we do in this world and so much how we learn to function that we don't even realize it. Um, it's very cool. It's very weird, uh, um, which is why I like it. So you can, if you would like some more information, you can look it up at accessconsciousness.com, but we will be talking a little bit about it and using some of the tools. I am an access consciousness bars and body process facilitator. All right. So, what are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about kids and bodies. Something that um, I love to talk about, something that's so much in my world, right? I'm a mom of three, I um, am a pediatric nurse, and there's so much that I know about kids and I know about what they know about bodies that um, we don't really, is not, you know, is just not really considered in this reality. And I really want to talk about it because I would really like to shed some light on what I know that kids know um, and challenge some of the points of view about um, kids in this in this reality. Uh, hmm. And I was just about to read the description of the show and my computer has just decided to go weird on me. <laughs> okay. So let me see if I can remember it off the top of my head. So kids and bodies. What do they know? What do kids know about their bodies that we as adults or we as a society are unwilling to acknowledge and unwilling to acknowledge them for, right? Look at how we treat children in relation to their bodies. We um, we tell them how much we, they should eat. We tell them how they should dress. We um, tell them how to play and how not to play, where to play, what activities to do with their body. Um, we tell them all kinds of things about sex. We project all of our beliefs onto them about sex. We teach them how to be and not to be around sex. Basically, we throw a whole crap load of conclusions at kids about their bodies, and we never acknowledge that they know anything, actually. Um, but especially about their bodies. You know, as infants, we we begin to train them, so to speak, about their bodies right from the minute that they're born. And what would it be like if we allowed kids to have their own awareness and we allowed kids to keep the connection that they have with their bodies? Because I think, you know, if you watch babies when they're born, if you watch infants, um, and you see how they're learning about their body and how really connected they are with their bodies. Um, you, you, if you really pay attention and you really drop all of your own judgments about what you learned about babies and children, you really can see that they are very connected to their bodies. They're very aware of their bodies and they're learning, right? They're they are learning about their bodies. They have no judgment about their bodies. They just go. And what would it be like if we could empower them to know what they know? And what would it be like if we trusted that they knew? So 
All right. Um, let's let's look at where are some of the areas that we limit our kids and in in essence teach them to shut down their awareness about their body. So, you know, I mentioned food, um, how to dress, what kind of clothes to wear, how to move, right? What sports they should play, um, uh, how, what do we teach them? What do we project at them about illness? I see this a lot at work where children uh, come into the hospital with an illness, um, some of them with very chronic, um, some of them with a very life-threatening disease, and we completely shove them to the side and um, pretend like they don't know anything about what's going on with their body. And so how much do children actually know about what's going on with their bodies when they're sick and what would happen, what would show up if we could actually acknowledge them, how much could things change, how much could their bodies change if we allowed them to know what they know and we encouraged them and invited them to choose things with their bodies um, when their bodies are, um, you know, doing something funky, but we'll we'll talk about that too. What have we decided about illness? Um, how much do we feel like we need to protect kids when they are little because they don't know, because they are they're don't have the knowledge and because they are just, um, they forget things or they're so innocent and they don't have knowledge? And how much do we feel like we need to protect them by making decisions for them? And what if that's not true? So why don't we start off um, looking a little bit at, well, what do you want to know? How about that? <laughs> what do you want to know? What would you like to know? What would you like to get out of this call? What are some questions that you have about kids and their awareness of their bodies? What would you like to get out of this? So one of the things that, uh, you know, what about you? So let's look at ourselves. So what was it about you that you were never acknowledged for as a child? What did you know about your body when you were a child that you were never, ever acknowledged for? Can you think of some examples from your childhood when your awareness was uh, not considered or even made wrong? So, you know, for me, I think one of the things that is stands out in my world a lot is that I was um, labeled a picky eater very early on in my life, and um, I was a very thin child. I was had no, you know, subcutaneous fat <laughs> whatsoever. Um, I was healthy. I was active. I was fine. I felt fine. Nothing was wrong in my world until I started getting told that. Um, and so I started getting told that I was too small and that I was too lanky and that I was too thin and that I should eat more. And, so, you know, my, my, my family is Italian and I had a very Italian nonna who in her world or in their world, if you weren't, you know, if you didn't have some extra meat on you, you were dying. So um took me to doctors all the time. Um, I actually, I remember my mom ordered some medication or some, I don't even know what the heck it was, something that I had to take internally, um, then something I had to drink that would open up my appetite. It was tasted disgusting, and she had it um, sent over all the way from Italy. So, um, so you know, that for me, food and weight is a big thing that was stood out in my mind as a child that I was constantly pushed to eat and constantly pushed to eat things that I did not enjoy and that I didn't like and I was full and I had to continue to eat even when my body was clearly telling me there was no room in my stomach for any more food. Um, so food is a big um, a big one for me and I'm sure for most of you and for many children in this reality, we, we really have a big point of view about how much kids should eat. So um, we're going to continue with that conversation in a little bit. We're going to take a break. And then we're going to come back and we're going to look at what else is possible with kids and bodies in relation to food. What do they know about how much they should eat, what they should eat, when they should eat, and how can we allow them to have choice? Um, so you are listening to Messy Adventures in Living uh, with Petrina Fava on a to Zen FM. We will be back very soon. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? 
Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world and to like yourself a lot more? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question, always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beingyouclass.com You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255 In Canada, 613-800-8736 In the U.K., 033-0001-0625 or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Hey, welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Petrina Fava, and we are talking today about kids and bodies, what do they know? Um, if you uh, would like to play with us today, you, there are several ways that you can join us. Uh, you can go to a to zen.fm and click, well, you are probably there already if you're listening, uh, and click on the chat room link, which is at the top right-hand corner. Click on it. It will ask you for a username. Put, put your name in there and make one up. It doesn't matter. And then log in, and um, you can come and chat with us in the playroom. You can ask a question in the playroom. Wow, can you tell I have children? Um, <laughs> in the chat room, which is like a playroom. <laughs> um, you can join us there in the chat room, ask your questions, um, make some comments. You Hey, Petrina, it's Rhonda, your producer. Can you hear me? <laughs> I believe we have lost Petrina, so I'm going to ask her to call back in. And I know we just came back from a break, but I'm going to give her some time to regroup. So you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava, and today she's talking about um, kids and bodies. What do they know? So stay tuned. We're going to be right back um, and try to get her back on the line. Thanks for listening, folks. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava, 
every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more? Hey, Katrina, you there? Oh, hey, yes, I'm there. That was yes, weird. Awesome. All right. That was very bizarre. So I'm going to give it back to you and let you Okay, and I'm brilliant. back in the chat room. Have a great show. So, oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Here you go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm Katrina Fava, your host. All righty, guys, let's get on this topic. So, what is what are we talking about today? Kids and bodies, what do they know? So, before we went to break, we were talking about some of the areas that we think kids don't know anything, and we project our own judgments and our own conclusions onto our kids. So what did you know when you were a child that you were never acknowledged for? And how different would it have been for you if you had the awareness, if you had if you were uh, invited and encouraged to tap into your awareness of your body? Um, what, you know, how awesome would that have been? And and cool, like if you were if that didn't show up for you in your childhood, you can have that now. And if you have children, what if we could parent our children the way we should have been parented? And that's not to make our parents wrong, but you know the awareness that you have now about your body. What if uh, we could invite our children to embrace their awareness and to have their awareness as well? Um, what amazing! stuff could that create for them what what how cool would it be if kids could were invited and encouraged to know to 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 trust their awareness about their bodies how cool would that be if we let them make their own choices about their bodies how different would their adult lives be um with that with that um a build with the, with the encouragement, with the allowance, with the invitation to know what they know about their bodies. All right, so I really want to look at food because this is huge. It's huge for me. Um, it was huge for me as a child, and I'll be honest with you, it's one of the areas that I myself had a, a lot of trouble with when I'm parenting my own kids. So what are all the points of view that we, that we have about food and kids and what they know? Basically, what I see when I look around is that we we think that kids are stupid and that they don't know how to eat properly. And we have to teach them how to eat properly because if we don't, they're just going to go around eating candy and sugar and drink pop and lemonade and then they're going to get rotten teeth and they're going to get sick and they're going to be skinny and they're going to be malnourished. So, okay, well, so everywhere you bought that, Hey, Katrina, it's Rhonda. Katrina? All right. Oh, yep. Sorry, this is your... That's okay. Are you there, Katrina? Yes, we keep I am here. You, darling. Can you hear me? <laughs> you, yeah, you can hear me? And you just kind of just... Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're, you'll be talking and then we, you just disappear. And so, wow, <laughs> in, in timeliness, I don't want to have you keep going on. So, um We'll keep going, and I'll communicate with you in the chat room, but you folks are um, wanting more of this, so let's just keep going and see if we can't clear up the technology. So, sorry, okay. folks, for popping okay. in. Thanks. Okay. Our, okay, so everything you bought as a child about what to eat, what not to eat, what, uh, what food is bad for you, what food is not bad for you, and everywhere you were basically taught to ignore your body because uh, ignore your body and uh, by the conclusions of other people, will you destroy and uncreate all of that, please? I'm right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine choice, boys and beyond. So that weird thing that I just said is called the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement. And it's a tool that we use to clear all the limitation associated with the energy that comes up when we talk about something. So it's really just like a like flushing the toilet okay so um yeah so we're going to be using that if you would like some more information about the clearing statement you can actually go to the clearing it has its own website how cool is that okay all right 
So, food. So what would happen, okay, what would happen if we let kids eat whatever they wanted to eat? What would happen? What do you think would happen? What are all your conclusions and everything that is? Well, you're just trying to create them. Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Good. So now how can we as parents invite kids to use their awareness when it comes to eating? So one of the first things that we need to do is look at all of the judgments and all of the points of view that we have as adults. Because with anything, especially in parenting, because we're just, I mean, not only in parenting, but we're talking about parenting today. So especially with parenting, you really, we need to look at all of the judgments that we have, that we have, because kids are like psychic sponge bombs. They're so aware of energy. They're so aware of energy. If you are ever around children, please acknowledge this, like acknowledge that you know this, because so much, you know, how much, think about you as a child, how much were you aware of? How many subtleties were you aware of? How much unspoken, things that were unspoken, did you know that you were never acknowledged for? And that you were taught, like taught out of, judged out of? So, and, okay, (laughs) let's clear that. So everywhere you were taught to disregard your awareness about your body, um, and everywhere you were never acknowledged for knowing your body better than anybody else, will you please destroy and uncreate all of that? Right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, online choice, boys and beyond. So before we can empower our own kids to know what they know about their bodies, it's really uh, important to look at ourselves and look at all those judgments that we have about bodies and about food and about clothes and about sex and about anything to do with bodies. And really um, let go of all of the places that we were not acknowledged for our awareness because then we can begin to invite our children into that. But it's really hard to invite your children to something when you have a bunch of shit going on for you around that same area. So I know a lot of times as parents, we want to help our kids and, you know, we want the best for them. And that's not wrong. And we need to remember that the best way to empower our kids and to invite our kids into a different possibility is to look at ourselves and to look at what's going on for us and to change what's going on for us so that we can be the invitation into something different for our kids rather than tell them uh, what to do. Because God knows, especially if you're a parent or you work with children in any way, or if you were a child, so that's pretty much everybody. We all know that the more you tell kids what to do, the more they say, F you, I'm not doing it just because you're telling me. I know. I've been there. I did that a lot with my mom. There were things that she told me that I knew were right. (laughs) And I resisted them like crazy because often she pushed her point of view on me so much that I just felt like I had to rebel and I had to say, no, fuck you. I know what I know. And there were times when, you know, I was like, "Mm, I think she's right. But I can't, I can't let her be right. <laughs> so what if the best way to invite our kids into something greater and invite our kids into greater awareness with their bodies, what if the best way to do that is to have greater awareness with our own bodies ourselves and invite them into that space? All right, it's already time for a break. So let's go to break. We're going to come back and talk more about what kids know about their bodies and how we can Uh, encourage them and invite them to a greater awareness with with their bodies and how we as parents can learn to trust that kids know. So you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living on a to zenfm Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific 
on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Petrina Fava. We are talking about kids and kids today. What do they know? What do they know that we are not willing to acknowledge, right? We try to control what they eat, how much they eat, when they eat, when they sleep, how much they sleep, what they wear, even how they move. Um, you know, we give them code names for body parts, right? Like we don't never call it, we can't call a penis a penis. It has to be a wee wee or something. Like it just makes me crazy. But we give them code names for their body parts. What does that create? What is the underlying energy there that they are very aware of? Because kids are so psychic and so aware they're very aware of energy they're very aware of subtlety so what does it create when we teach them to call their penis a wee wee you know i mean you might think well what difference does it make it's just a word but it's not because there's an underlying energy they're they're aware of some some energy underneath there that tells them that you know something is different about their penis because i can't call it what it is you know and or there's some some tension when we discuss that body part you know what is that and then what does that create in the world right um, how many of our own conclusions about our bodies are we projecting onto our kids? How early do they learn that bodies are to be hidden or not talked about or shameful, right? Certain certain body parts especially. Are we actually protecting them by trying to tell them what to eat and what to wear and how many layers to wear in the winter and like, you know, which sports are good for them and which ones are too dangerous? Are we actually protecting them? Or are we teaching them to disregard their awareness? And actually dampening their natural ability to communicate with their bodies and and dampening their natural ability to connect their bodies to the earth, to this planet, and to connect their bodies with other bodies. How much are we shutting all of that off, right? You know, did you ever learn that as a child? Did you know that as an infant? Did you know that as a very young baby? Did you know what did you know about the earth? Like, what did you know about your body and the earth that that was quickly judged out of existence? What did you know about your body and other people's bodies? What? How much were you aware of how aware your body was of other people's bodies? And everywhere you denied that. Well, I don't know. That's just the word that came out of my mouth. <laughs> everywhere you denied your awareness the awareness of your body, the your the ability of your body to be aware of other people's bodies, the ability of your body to be aware of the earth, everywhere you denied that and cut that off in favor of in favor of your parents' point of view, will you destroy and uncreate all of that? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. How much do we as children, how much do kids, how willing are they to drop what they know? because they want so much to please their parents. 
And everywhere you did that, everywhere you cut off your awareness of your body in an effort to please your parents, to make your parents happy, or to create some kind of change, not that you're wrong, not that you were wrong for that, but everywhere you did that, would you like to drop all of that now, leave it behind, destroy it and create it, and create something different, right, wrong, good, and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds? Wow. Um, how do we end up talking about ourselves and bodies <laughs> on a kids and bodies call? Well, just like what I was talking about before, right? If we don't, you know, we need to really look at our own judgments and our own points of view in order to create something different for our kids, in order to invite them to something different. Okay, so just looking in the chat room, isn't our jo- isn't that our job as a parent? Yeah, right. So these these are um, conditions that we have, right? So what are all of the what are all of the things, the ideas, the beliefs that you've bought as a parent that it's your job to protect your kids, it's your job to feed them, it's your job to make sure that they're healthy, it's your job to make sure that they're clothed properly. Um, you know, what else? It's your job to provide them with opportunities for sports and guide them. It's your job to guide them. Okay, so everywhere you bought that is true. Everywhere you bought conclusions about what it is, what your job is as a parent, which then completely cuts off your awareness about what your individual child actually requires. Will you please destroy and create all that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. I love talking about this because I'm clearing all kinds of my own judgments right here on this show. <laughs> it's great. Um, so, um, yeah, like we have a bunch of beliefs that these are, this is our job as a parent. And please understand, like I'm not saying that it's wrong um, to clothe your child or to provide them with healthy meals or to, you know, encourage them to participate in sports. Like I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that we often go all the way to the extreme. We buy these beliefs, we buy these judgments, and then when we buy these judgments and beliefs and conclusions, when we hold on to them as truth and the only truth, then we're not asking questions about what's actually required. Right? If, 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 yeah, we're not asking questions about what's required. And then we're just con- creating a whole bunch of conclusions and a whole bunch of limitations and not really opening up ourselves and inviting our children to other possibilities. So Ron in the chat room is just saying, my son has always hated sleeves in the winter and despises coats. Finally stop fighting him and let him get the awareness that he required to know better when and when not sleeves and coats were necessary. He runs hot, so he's usually spot on way more than I used to be. Yeah, for sure. Glad I finally chose to let him know what he knows years ago. Yeah, life is so much easier now. Totally. And that thank you. I wanted to go right into clothing, actually, because... I remember so well as a child, especially like, I mean, I live in Toronto, Canada, right? So it's pretty cold. We get a lot of snow. And I remember being completely overdressed in the winter. Oh my God. I was like sweating buckets under my, my snow suit and my, you know, two layers of socks and scarf and hats. And it's like, okay, I'm sweating under here. No, no, no. You need to bundle up. Like you're going to get sick. It's like, but I'm so I'm telling you, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm I can't even breathe like I can't expand my chest because there's so many layers would you please let me take off my jacket it's way too hot so this is craziness to me and and yes um Rhonda in the chat room I'm now willing to have people judge me for being a bad parent thank you exactly so how much of what we do to our kids is our concern about being judged as a bad parent right and so everywhere you are parenting from other people's judgment, will you please destroy and uncreate all of that? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, poise and beyond. My my daughter, my kid, I tell you, man, I love my kids. My my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter right now, today, went to school with no socks on. So And she does this. She goes to school with no socks. She hates socks. And guess who else hates socks? Me. I do not like socks. I will wear socks pretty much until it's like minus five. I will not wear socks. I will go barefoot, like barefoot in my shoes until it's very cold winter. I hate socks. My body does not like socks. And I often don't wear socks. Um, And, you know, my daughter also does not like socks. And it drives me crazy that she doesn't wear socks, (laughs) which is hilarious because I know exactly what it feels like not to wear socks. And so I've really had to be like, okay, Petrina, that's a really interesting point of view you have that she should wear socks. And you know what? I just I let it go. It's like, don't wear socks. And one day, you know, today it's raining here in Toronto. And I'm thinking, okay, you're going to step in a puddle. Your feet are going to get, you know. 
where the box is soggy and you don't care, then you can still not wear socks. Whatever. And she's not going to die because she's not wearing socks. So everywhere we bought this ridiculous idea that being cold creates illness. Okay, I'm sorry. As a nurse, this drives me mental. <laughs> Get, you know, not dressing warm enough does not make you sick. Okay, it does not make you sick. So everywhere we bought only crap point of view. Would you please destroy and uncreate it? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot, pot, all night, choice, boys and beyonds. When I was a kid, we used to have neighbors that lived across the street that um, used to wear shorts, like in, you know, very cool weather, um, well before uh, uh, summer came around. And I remember my my mom used to be like, why are those kids never sick? Look at how they dress. They don't wear layers. You know, I dress you properly, and you are always having colds and this and that, and, and like, because I had a lot of ear infections and stuff as a kid, so my mom always made sure I had a hat on and earmuffs and, like, because I had a lot of ear infections. So, and she was like, I don't understand these kids across the street. They, like, are practically running around naked and in this cold weather, and they're never sick. Yeah, take a hint. <laughs> take a hint. Don't parent from judgments. Let's not parent from judgments, okay? Let's parent from awareness and let's teach our kids that they know their bodies. Um, we don't know better than them. And I think this is a, an idea, a belief that we have that colors everything we do as parents. This belief that children don't know anything because they're little. It's not true. Kids know a lot. You know what they, you know, uh, this weekend my husband said something that I thought was interesting. Um, I don't even remember what we were discussing with my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter. Um, and he said, you know, she thinks she knows about this world, but she doesn't. And I was like, wow, that's exactly true. She she knows. She does know a lot. What kids do know a lot. What they don't know is they don't know about this world. This stupid, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> this stupid bullshit conclusion filled reality you're right she doesn't know about the bullshit of this fucking world <laughs> this is so like it makes me crazy you're right yes children don't know about this world they don't know about this reality they don't know about all the bullshit that's perpetrated in this reality they know what's true they know about magic they know about their bodies they know about awareness they know a lot they don't know about this world thank god they have not yet been quite as tainted as we have as adults about the bullshit that's in this reality. So let, what if we celebrate that? And what if we remind kids that they do know? What do they know? And what would happen if we asked them what they know? What do they know? Instead of putting on our conclusions to them, right? Um, what would it be like if we asked kids you know, if they, you know, if they have a cold or if they're sick, if they have a pain in their body, what would it be like if we asked them, "Hey, what do you know about this? What is your body telling you? What awareness are you having? What is this? What if we ask them?" And you know, they might not even give us an answer. A lot of times, I ask my kids that question: "If mommy, I have a tummy ache, or like mommy, my throat hurts, or whatever," and I'll go, "Cool, what is that?" And they're like, "I don't know." <laughs> And the, the the purpose of asking a question is not to get an answer. It, it, it's really to get an awareness. It's really to become connected to your awareness. And so remember that when when we're we're talking to kids and when we're asking them questions. Because I don't know about you, but I do this um, a lot with my kids. Um, is I'll ask them a question, um, and I'll wait for the answer. And in access, when we talk about asking questions, it's really to gain an to gain awareness. It's not to get an answer. It's to tap into what you know. So I'll, often I will ask my kids, well, what do you know? Well, what do you know? What do you know about this? And I have to remember to back the fuck off. <laughs> back off. I really feel like swearing today. <laughs> I really have to remember to really back off and remember that asking, planting a question in their world is to allow them to have the awareness. So what would it be like if we ask kids what they know about their bodies and invited them to know what they know about their body and then just let it go and um, trust that they will come to their awareness and that they will get to know their bodies. Okay, so it's time for another break. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living on hsn.fm. We will be back talking more about kids and bodies. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. 
Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. In the UK, 033-0001-0625. Or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at patrinafava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. I'm your host, Petrina Fava. We're talking about kids and bodies today. What do they know? So over the last, if you're just jumping into the last few minutes of the show, we have been talking about all of the judgments that we have as adults about kids and how much they don't know about anything and really challenging that point of view and um, acknowledging that actually kids know a lot uh, and about themselves and about their bodies and about their the earth and about um, how to be aware of other bodies and how to be aware of the earth. They they have this awareness. Often what they don't know is the baloney and the crap and the conclusions of this reality that are perpetrated on them. And, you know, how much have we mis- how much have we misidentified this? What is that? There's an energy here. And let me see if I can get words out of my mouth. How much have we misidentified children's heightened awareness of what is true as ignorance of the conclusions of this reality or something like that. You know, how much are we looking at kids and saying things like, oh, they're just, they're so innocent and they're so, they don't know, you know, they don't know anything. They're so innocent. And like, oh, they just forget things. Like, of course, babies um, get up and try again when they're walking because they forgot that they bumped their head yesterday. Like, what if none of that is true? What if we're so not acknowledging that they have so much awareness uh, and they haven't bought into the bullshit of this reality? And how cool is that? And what a gift that could be to us if we would just allow ourselves to receive it. Right. So everywhere that you have been told or that you bought the idea that kids don't know anything because they're little and because they have don't have experience, when in fact what that is, is that they have not been twisted out of their awareness by this reality. Would you please destroy and create all of that? Right, wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Okay, we just have uh, about 10 minutes, but I really want to touch on sex and kids um, because I feel like this is a pretty hot topic. And 
um, there's a lot of beliefs and ideas out there in this in the, in society and in this reality that sex is not sex and kids don't go together, and um, you know I really would like to consider or invite you to consider that children actually are sexual beings. They have sexualness. They know about their bodies. Um, they they know from a very young age what feels good. They know about sexualness, not from a thought point of view, but from an energetic point of view and also from the point of view of their bodies. And up into your awareness of what they know. Um, and look at all of your judgments and all of your conclusions that you have about sex and the wrongness of it. And, um, you know, really drop all of your crap around there so that you can invite children to acknowledge what they already know about their bodies. Um, because you don't suddenly become a sexual being when you're 20 years old or, well, not certainly not 20, but, you know, 12. Like, you know, sexualness doesn't start at puberty. It, it, it actually begins very early on. Most small young babies have sexualness. They they know their bodies. And what would it be like if we could invite them to have the awareness and, and to um, invite them to know what they know about this with all about all of the weird taboo and what if we could give them information about sex and information about their bodies without all of the judgments that are attached to it all of the judgments that we have about our own bodies what if what would it be like if we could give them information instead of judgments um about about their bodies my daughter uh, is 12 and when she first got her period and she was going through puberty i was i was really like I wanted to do the this reality thing of like, oh, buy a book and like read a book with her and that kind of thing. And I knew there was something about it that was not right. And and I knew that if I w read her books and I picked some up and I looked through them and to me, they were just a whole bunch of conclusions. And I really it didn't make it very significant. I invited her to ask questions, but I really avoided the temptation to say things like, you know, when you get your period, you're going to have cramps and, you know, sometimes you get a headache and sometimes it feels really crappy. I did not say any of that to her. I mean, you know, we need to look at how much of our conclusion about what we learned and about what we are experiencing with our bodies are we projecting at our kids? And what if we didn't have to do that? What if we could invite them to know what they know? What if we could invite them to acknowledge their awareness and the way we would do that is to acknowledge their awareness and also to acknowledge our awareness of our bodies because it's a really um, tricky thing to invite kids to be aware of their bodies when we as parents have a shitload of our own judgments and we are not being aware with our own bodies so you know, I really invite you to not look so much at what you're doing with your kids and really invite you to look at what you're being with yourself and with your own body and and invite you to acknowledge what you know about your body and in this way invite kids to acknowledge what they know about their bodies as well. Um, so I wanted to just uh, run this clearing about chaos because um, in, in access, in this modality, we've been talking a lot about chaos and um, kids and chaos, we, you know, <laughs> go really well together. So what have, what have you made so vital about controlling the chaos that your kids be that keeps you from receiving the gifts that they so much desire to be for you, right? What have you made so vital about controlling them, controlling the chaos? that keeps you from receiving the gifts that they truly be for you and in your world. Um, I invite you to receive the gifts that your children be. Um, thank you so much to, uh, for joining us here on Messy Adventures in Living today. Uh, join us again next week where we will have more fun jumping in and getting messy with our choices. Have a great week, you guys. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for playing with us on Messy Adventures in Living. Petrina Fava will return next Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Mountain, and 6 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. We'd love to have you join us again. Until then, have fun creating your phenomenal life, mess and all. <laughs>